Before starting work in any department, go first to the control room where you'll be signed in and issued with a tag. Before you leave the department, sign out again and return the tag to the board. Chronosman employees doing routine jobs must follow the generic risk assessment. Contractors and employees doing one-off jobs must have a specific risk assessment. Every aspect of the job you're required to do must be looked at by a competent person and the risks to you and to others around you assessed before you start. You'll agree a way of working that will minimise any risks. The risk assessment will include details of any electrical isolation and lockout procedure and these must be strictly adhered to. This way of working is written up on what's called a method statement, which has been agreed with your line manager or Chronospan contact before you begin. For contractors, the rule is simple. No method statement, no work. Contractors will require to have a master permit to work. However, the following work areas are higher risk and additional controls or even a second permit will be required. We'll begin by looking at roof work. A roof permit has to be signed off either by the safety department or by the project's manager. The work area must have proper edge protection. If it's a fragile roof, it must also be boarded out before you go onto it. If this can't be done for any reason, then it must be made safe by fixing under netting beneath the work area. Fall arrest harnesses should only be used as a last resort if safety can't be guaranteed by any other means. The hot work permit is a standalone permit that does not require a master permit to work. The green copy of the permit must be handed to a member of the fire prevention team before work commences and you'll be required to have a second person standing by on fire watch duty. You may have to damp down the area. Whatever it tells you to do on the permit, you must comply with it. You'll need a separate permit to enter a confined space. Confined spaces include conveyors, ducting and storage tanks. Any hole in the ground or manhole constitutes a confined space. If you're in any doubt about what is a confined space, ask the safety department or your Chronospan contact. Most electrical work will also require a permit to work, which must be authorised by one of Chronospan's electrical engineers. Before beginning any digging work, the ground must be checked for underground pipes and cables and a permit issued by the projects department. There are not many radioactive sources on site. Where there are, they're clearly marked and you may not do any work in that area without a radiation permit which must be signed by the Radiation Protection Supervisor. The formal implant and the resin plant are chemical works operating within the factory and are both designated as COMA sites. COMA stands for Control of Major Accident Hazards. They have clearly defined boundaries because of the special hazards which qualify them for inclusion in the COMA regulations, only approved preferred contractors and competent persons 
are allowed to work in this area. And if you're in any doubt about whether or not you are an approved contractor, then you're not. As a coma site, it has its own permit to work system. And before doing any work in this area, you must seek the specific approval of the plant manager. Because of the high fire risk, all of your equipment must be intrinsically safe. Gas burning and welding equipment must be fitted with flashback arresters. Petrol driven equipment is prohibited throughout the plant. Stationary engine equipment like compressors and generators must have a drip tray underneath them to prevent any oil or fuel leaks from entering the drainage system. 240 volt hand tools are not allowed on site. Battery powered tools are preferred, but where this isn't practical, 110 volt hand tools may also be used. All 110 volt portable electrical equipment must carry a current PAT test tag. You should only use lifting equipment with a current colour coded cable tie that shows it's been tested. The colour coding scheme is displayed in the central engineering workshop. Any lifting equipment brought onto site must be covered by a current certificate of inspection. All lifting operations must be controlled by a competent slinger or banksman. Compressed air may appear harmless, but it isn't. A high pressure jet can puncture the skin and if the air gets into the bloodstream, it can kill. Air lances with safety nozzles that reduce the final delivery pressure must always be used. Always wear goggles and gloves when using compressed air. Nationally, Falls from height are the most common cause of death in the workplace. All these accidents are avoidable and in order to prevent them, stringent regulations are in place. If you don't have both feet planted firmly on the floor, you're deemed to be working at height and the regulations apply to you. Here's a summary of those regulations. Portable access equipment, including scaffolding and scaffold towers, can only be erected by competent, approved persons who've been trained and qualified as scaffold erectors. It must be inspected and tagged by a trained inspector before use and at regular intervals. Scaffolding must have proper rails at or above waist height and footboards to prevent your feet from slipping off and to prevent loose objects from falling off. Ladders may only be used for access, not as a working platform. Scaffold ladders must be lashed or clamped in three places. Ladders must be individually identified and must be part of an inspection regime. If mobile working platforms are used, a safety harness with a fixed length lanyard must be worn and it must be attached to the basket. To operate any mobile plant on site, you must have a current plant operator's licence. If access isn't possible by standard access equipment, then a fall arrest harness must be used. Many industrial injuries are the result of lifting and carrying operations. The key essential when picking something up is to stand up by straightening your legs and keeping your head up all the time to keep your back straight. Don't attempt to pick up something that's too heavy for you. Either get help or use a mechanical aid.